If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries. Today we have a Bretta 693 in for uh, stock adjustments. The customer was telling me that it shoots high and to the right. The guy is rather slender with quite a long neck, uh, tall. The length of pull has been adjusted. The pitch has already been adjusted by another gunsmith. And this is one of those epic situations where sometimes the customer, in trying to please the gunsmith, fails to mount the gun correctly. So presses his cheek far down here, gets cheek slap. I've actually had three cheek slaps this week, uh, two of which were poor posture where you need to go nose over toes. Um, so that was causing this cheek slap on two of them. But this gentleman actually does mount and stand correctly, but he does have a habit of squeezing his cheek down hard here in order to obtain a good sight picture along the rib. So in the fact that I seem to be doing more of these with the younger people, the older generation tend to be between the height of between five foot six, five foot ten. The younger generation seem to be getting taller and that changes the most common adjustments being made, certainly in the younger groups. So what I propose to do is drop the comb by bending and adding cast. So what I need to do is set this up. So I've got a lot of fixture clamps and the like, which normally would be lots of scraps of wood. And when I used to work at a, the back of a retail gun shop, my scraps of wood would be tidied away, shall we say, by earnest members of the retail side who had a little bit of OCD and couldn't stand to see scraps of wood, what they thought were just rubbish, floating about and in their way. So that was uh, sometimes an issue. But as we move forward, I've actually created a, a set of custom jigs etc so here I am just placing the essential clamps around and about now the idea here is to clamp the stock in the hand onto the action so that it's immobile fix this Fix the actual rib hard to the jig so that when we can actually make bends adjustments here, they will actually be evident. I'll tighten all this up in a minute. This one is off camera at the moment, and this one's to stop the barrel moving when we're under pressure because there's still a surprising amount of flex. Again, all these get nipped up properly over time. So I'll clamp this here too to increase the overall pressures evenly spread and um, intentionally clamping the wood to the action. We will take the butt screw butt plate off, remove the screws and take the butt stock bolt out. It will be interfering with the bending process. Okay, so that's essentially what you've got there. I'll do a different angle for you in a second. <clears throat> Just get it roughly shaped up. I will tighten this before I start making further adjustments. <clears throat> and then when we actually come to set it, we will pop that there to allow us to put the cast on. And a little wedge will slide in here to allow to 
create drop on the comb. All this has to be done with heat. So I have some tungsten heat lamps here, which drop in like this. And I will decide whether or not to use uh, linseed or not. Sometimes it, with, it, with the heat lamp, it can actually create a more gummy residue that's harder to remove. Um, I tend to suck it and see, see how we go. So that's the approximate appearance of the jig. You can see better now how this is, the fixtures are holding the gun in place. I've got my verniers there ready to make measurement checks. So that's the comb raising wedge. That will just pop on there. That will be a support for the cast on clamp. These clamps hold it firmly down onto the workpiece. This workpiece is dead level throughout the whole job. And uh, that's how you achieve a stock bend, at least with my iteration of a stock bending jig. There are many like it, various different ways of doing this. Whole arrays of metal around the outside, sometimes around here, uh, with clamps and screws and all sorts. I've just chosen to do it this way. The metal backbone was my original jig and uh, this just enables me to do more with it more quickly. And I've got clamping points here and here underneath so it allows me to, as you can see there, so this fixture here is to stop the movement and the twist when there's uh, pressure applied to the stock to increase the cast. And there we go. I'm having a little smile to myself because as you can see my customer has popped in he's chopped off the end of a shotgun cartridge just to re retain the shot and then he's filled the cavity with shot to create a dead hammer in the efforts of trying to uh, assuage the pain he feels through the cheek slap so I will have to extricate that a little in order to get the bolt undone and removed. So my offset this end is about 50 millimeters to center approximately or thereabouts anyway the center of the action is 50 millimeters and when we check it here, it's only got an eighth, an eighth or a few millimetres uh, uh, cast on. We need about six mil cast, quarter inch, and six mil, ideally, comb drop or raised in this case, because it's upside down. And we come to actually get the stock softened enough to do this. The old venerated Jack Rowe used to use the old fashioned method, which I used to use, I must admit, um, which was cotton soaked rags in linseed oil and a blowtorch and just keep heating and heating. And that works beautifully on old side by sides. You have to be a bit more careful with these heavy pistol grip over unders. So I don't use this technique anymore. I tend to use the dry system and a combination of nourishing around where the checkering is because some of this checkering is not true checkering it's a laser checkering so it's already predisposed to scorching and if you've ever had a dry stock bend go wrong it's because the the checkering gets scorched and you have to then run your checkering tools through it and give them a free checkering on you because the scotch scorching so that's when i add a bit of linseed there just to reduce the scorching effect and it helps the penetration and it nourishes and it gives keeps the uh, the wood nice and supple and, and waterproof so it, it doesn't it's, it's never a good never a bad thing to add linseed oil to a gun stock or walnut oil or any of the other things but when we're applying heat I use linseed oil because it's stable this is no trade secret everybody does it linseed was the thing cricket bats so we still have some bits and bobs in there and good old wobbly cam at present. So I'm going to fish out 
what looks like a wadding that's still in there. Here we go. This is just a sign of how desperate the customer's been. Uh, to, to try to resolve this issue, um, people will try all sorts to try and improve their shooting when they have this perceived problem. Like I said, two young gentlemen only this week have had to... Oh, crikey. He's been busy, boy. I'm going to have to go and fish again. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be back. OK, let's see. If I... Oh, I think I've got it. I had to go and get some wire and play a bit of go fish. And as you can see, we're slowly pulling out that tissue paper wad. Ah, oh, joy. There's more. I'm beginning to lose count of which bits are which now, but... Blinking heck. It's like artillery. This is using a worm. Ah, oh, I had it. There we go. Got it. Okay. Didn't think I'd be doing this today. <laughs> oh, no. Even more. I don't believe it. <laughs> Crikey. Right, okay, I'm going to have to drop the camera again. Ah, finally. In the bottom of that is the stock nut. So we'll see what we can do now. Trying to one-handedly remove these cut-off shot shells. This will work. This is not such a terrible thing to do, except when somebody else has got to come in behind you after you've done it. Uh, I actually do cast I do actually cast up pieces of lead to do this and I have in fact used that method oh my goodness I'm gonna have to get looking in here I need a light in here right so Scott the stock bolt is now loose I don't know if I can extract it uh, let's see if I can There we go. Was a little bit rusty sometimes. Right, the importance of removing that is because that shiny bit at the end there, the very far end of the stock hole, is the action. There will be some deviation, but unfortunately, the steel stock, stock bolt actually causes a heat sink effect. So that's why I remove it at this point. Right, so on with the job. I'm about to pop the lamps on and begin the process of warming up the actual stock. In the wrist, it has to be in the pistol grip, I'm afraid, as well, because you want the curvature to be spread, not strained over this one part. And as it goes on, I'll decide whether I need to add linseed oil to nourish and uh, help penetrate the heat. So this is how it is, it's clamped in correctly. My, my barrel stopped to stop it flapping because the whole thing does flex even with a steel backbone in it. So at the moment, there's very little movement there. You can see the whitening of my fifth bum there. It's really stiff and not wanting to move. And again, there's a bit of creaking of the fixture, but there's literally no movement up or down to make the drop. So I've got to get this plasticized. So people talk about glass reinforced resin, carbon reinforced resin. This is the original cellulose reinforced resin, the resin being lignin that's naturally occurring in wood and the cellulose fibers creating the structure. So this is your authentic natural version of GRP or CRP. So it's a carbon fiber type thing. Well, this is carbon fiber, but in a natural form and lignin being the resin that holds it all together. So what we need to do is soften the lignin resin within the structure of the wood to allow that bend to happen. 
and even then we still need to use some clamping force to squeeze that there as well so it's going to take some doing right so here we go power on there you go not a lot to see so i'll see you in some time so let's see if you can see this now <clears throat> there's a bit more movement there uh, so we can definitely get some cast on and it's not an exact science with this it's more of a do a bit about twice as much as you need it, each gun varies to be fair so you can see now I'm putting on quite a pronounced bend on that and we also need to increase the drop so I'm just going to measure it in terms of the relationship as it stands right I'm going to use a steel rule with this So I've got 55 millimetres parallel to the rib. So I'm going to drop that by, by lifting this up now. I, I don't know whether you're going to see this, but I am able to bend that quite a bit. And then that now reads, that's now set at 60. Well, just to be on the safe side, I need to increase that a tiny bit more because it will relax back. Uh, and 60. There you go. Okay, 65. So there is an overage on what we're looking for. So that's 55 on the centre there, uh, approximately, 53 I think actually. So I need to check that to centre, got 15 mil deviance there, so you can get away with a little bit more than that. So it's being pressed that way and up. And this is fixed here, oh, off camera here, just here, uh, because it's clamped down tightly onto power rods. Let's leave that to relax and hopefully, yeah, that's getting hot. Not gonna change that too much at the present. It's just got to stretch out at the underside has got to stretch out a bit and this is under compression so this side's under compression here and the top or the, the lower part of the pistol grip there they're both under compression whereas the underside and what will be the left side when you view it from the correct position is in it is in expansion so just leave it be don't seem to need any oil at present there's no scorching it's you can't touch it for too long and there's heat from here all the way through so it will be fine it's just patience is a virtue and there we go I'll just leave that for a bit longer okay so here we are a couple of hours later again this is a lot hotter than it was before. I moved the lamp so that they cover more of the width there. Focusing on this initially here, just here, but now we're on the center bit where the pistol grip is. The idea being behind that is that you spread the stretch, the bend over as much of the stock as possible. On side by sides, old English side by sides, you can do it all in the wrist, but you have to be a little bit more flexible when it comes to over-unders. 
Right, so first test is to see how much we've uh, actually bent this by. I'm just going to relax this a little bit. It always relaxes. So we've got 40, 42. And the offset was 52. So we've got a 10 mil offset. It was about five mil or just a shade under quarter inch cast on. It's now just a little under half an inch cast on, 10 mil roughly. So that's appearing to be holding at present so it is it is forming a bend and it need it's 57 on the drop when it was 50 mil before i want to just encourage that a little bit more first so we're going to just pop that back in again give that a little lift again and we'll just pop that back on so that we retain the bend that we've got Bearing in mind that sometimes it moves a slight bit around the action, which does prevent a true accurate bend. So we always put a little, little extra on. Now it is creaking a bit, you can hear that. That's mainly because of the wedge that's pressing the... Uh, let's adjust that better, that's better. I need to be able to measure the drop adjustment there. Okay. That's maintained a 62 mil approximately. Extra a drop. There's a bit more than I need because it always bounces back a little bit. And of course, when we put the stock bolt back in it is more than likely to pull up a little bit as well so there's always about double what you need um, on these small movements so we'll leave it a bit longer so there's a little more investigating i want to do before we finish this job uh we don't have a lot of shot in that so there's not a lot of weight benefit although there's a lot of stuff been stuffed up inside I just want to look at this extra one here and see what we can pull out. I want to see what exactly what we're dealing with here. I'm trying to ease this out one-handedly while holding the camera. <laughs> that should be a cascade of little bits of shot. And tissue paper and goodness knows what else. Okay, so there is there is a set of weights in there. I kind of wondered if there would be. Some models do have that. So we have got a void here. I could actually put almost two ounces of lead in there to make up the difference and do away with all of this. Perhaps I will do that. We will have to see. But I don't think I will replace all this shot because there's not enough of it. Not by a, a long chalk. I'll go and measure the weight of the the shot that's there and I replace it with solid in this cavity just here that leaves the bolt free to be accessed at future times so when all said and done the total of that including the tissue paper and all the wads and hulls and goodness knows what is three ounces and I reckon I can put one of my solid slugs counterweights in the top just here with this other one amounting to about three ounces as well leaving that clear so that's one of the things I will do for my customer because he did say he wanted to maintain that weight he found it beneficial putting the counterweight in the back has some kind of effect to the weight of the gun it adds weight physically but it shifts the center of balance so that it can fall more comfortably in your forehand when you're holding the weapon so it's it's sometimes beneficial 
and the extra weight does have some some form of dampening effect to the report of any shot. So we'll see what how that goes. That can always be removed if it's too much at a later date. But anyway, you can see the weight with a bit of padding will sit in there quite happily. Need to figure out why there's moisture around there. Maybe he seems to be sweating off or something from the heat. We'll see. Anyway, so there's the counterweight taken care of. So just going to see what this wetness is here. Uh, that's curious. So I didn't use steam on this to bend it. But maybe that's highlighting something else I need to look into. Next day. Still concerned about this water in the... Uh, internal parts of the stock but we'll see about that in a minute all right so unclamped i've got a got 60 i cast to 42 so did the offset that's cast on by about seven Eight mil potentially in addition right so let's just see what we can do move the lamps everything's cool now so I won't burn myself and I just unclamp this see what we've got I do need to see what's going on with this wet stock malarkey I have no clue why that is Some of the old guns, old school gunsmiths do use steam and boiling water. And I can't imagine that they immerse the whole stock, but somehow moisture's got inside. But we will see. Okay. So this should just literally pop off. It's wet through, look. Ah, oh, it's weird. So that's had quite some time. Yeah, that's still soaking wet in there. It could be oil. I wonder if it's linseed. It feels wet though, cold and wet. It's not as wet as it was the other day. So... Just so you know, I've had this on the dehumidifier. Oh no, it's just oil. On that, it's oil. Okay. So it potentially is. No, it's definitely wet at the back, coming out the back. Perhaps it's just displaced moisture. There's a bit of oil there too. Okay. Well, we'll have to just see. So, uh, sweated out some oil as well. So yeah, it's just been used. It's been using, should I say, some uh, obviously linseed oil. They must have tried bending it at some point. Uh, I did it dry this time, so it wasn't from any oil I added. Let's quickly uh, do up the stock. Right. I'll just pop this back into place a second. Right, that's no, this is not tight, it's just loose sure that we can get what we want out of this. <clears throat> the stock bolts through now. Seek our way in. 
isn't clamped, by the way. It's just, there we go. And a few turns on the wrench. Okay, just, but if you can see now, you might better see it around here. It does slightly tweak up. <clears throat> Just clamp the leaves together. Hands in the way, of course, always. There we go. Tweak that a little bit. There you go. See that bump moves across a bit. Just need these in here so that we can make our measurements as before in the clamp position, just to ensure that everything's as it should be. With this new iteration of this clamping system, it's definitely a lot easier to operate. Everything's a lot more consistent. I'm just going to clamp that down. That's nice and solid. We quickly check these measurements again. Forty-five and fifty-five. We've already got a five mil drop there hmm that's nearly quarter of an inch i suspect we're going to need a little more so as an experiment what i'm going to do is i'm put the lamps back on again with the bolt pulling down all i'll do in this case we'll just slack off the bolt not remove it completely At this point, it's always fun to try and find the, like just a couple of turns to relax the bolt. So it's fairly, there, it's hand tight. <clears throat> Lamps back on. We're going to put a bit of a bias on the heating position to be further back from the bolt just to give it a little bit of bend here a little softening and I'm also doing this because of this moisture content in the bolt cavity which is weird I don't think it's just natural moisture unless it's acquired moisture in the in its lifetime it seems bizarre the humidity should be fairly consistent with wood, cured wood, and it's dry, it's not soaking wet, it's not like been dipped in water. It is a bizarre situation. It has, they have used linseed oil on this in the past because there was a little bit in the action where, it, where the action joins the, the hand of the stock. So let's just see what we get anyway. So, Heat on. Cast isn't quite as we would want. It needs to be a little more cast. This is the stubbornness that you get with over-unders, typically, because it's just such a lump of wood. See, it will take some bending uh, without any creaking. That's where we want it, about there. Anyway, and just a little lift on that. Now the bolt's going to help us to keep this orientation correct. So any bends that get done, or any influences that we can create, will 
occur. Okay, so humidifier, dehumidifier on again, just to get that dried out. That's the whirring you can hear. I'm going to leave it a few more hours to see if we can get that to dry and set out. Set. It's still damp inside that bulk cavity. There's no rust though, so it's a real conundrum. See you soon, guys. Okay, two hours later. <clears throat> Just going to nip up that stock bolt. Excellent. I'll pop a little bit of this tissue wadding back into the weighted section. Three ounce weight in fully. Yep. Just want to pull that out a bit. Put a bit more wadding in. Right, that just stops it shaking about, but it means my customer can remove it as an optional wish, desire. So slacken off this. Slacken off the comb wedge. So we have now, oh lovely, 58 millimeter overall drop. We've added eight millimeters to the, the drop on the heel of the comb and 45 offset. There's a full five mil, it's nearly six mil, quarter mil cast on. So just start relaxing the items now. Never did get to the bottom of that quandary as to the moisture content inside that uh, stock bolt cavity. Really strange. I can only surmise that it was uh, water or steam condensed when it's previously been bent. Because I know another gunsmith has done work on it. So who knows? It is what it is after all. Right. Okay, lights off. Hot lights. Let's move them out of the way for safety. Okay. Oh yeah, still a bit warm, but looking very corrected, shall we say. Okay, so there's the weight. I'll put some wadding in there. It will compress nicely down. It won't be wobbling about. Just for the sake of it, I'll pop it, put a little wrap of blue paper around it. This is not permanent. This is something we've agreed that I would leave in for the customer. If he feels like he doesn't want it, he doesn't have to return to me to have it removed. He can simply uh, just slip it out himself. Okay. Looking for a posi drive screwdriver is always the thing, isn't it? <laughs> I'll go to my trusty cordless. That would be quicker anyway. There we go. And back on. Ah, yes, it has had an LOP done on it. You can see very vaguely a hint of when you've shortened a stock, the fat bit tapers towards the rear. There's always a millimeter or so of extra wood on each side there. So it has had an LOP done previously. So that's quite a clear demonstration of the work's been doing. You can see some sort of greasiness left over. I think this was steamed by a previous gunsmith. 
because it, you get a dry finish using the uh, methods I use, but you can see there's a weird lifting. I may have to do a bit of remedial surface woodwork. That's fine, I don't mind that. It's all part of the service and there's no extra charge for that. It's just a matter of you know, looking after my customers. Right, I'm gonna leave that there to cool off now. And that is the video. Uh, at some point, I'll probably do one using the old Jack Rowe method of linseed oil, a blowtorch and some cotton rags. More than likely, I'll do it on this jig, but I'll use a side by side to do that with. Uh, so watch the space for that. And I'll put a link in the bottom of the video in the description for the Jack Rowe video that I'm talking about. Good old boy, bless him. Uh, that's it, folks. So, as usual, don't forget, like and subscribe. Thank you.